What is up and welcome back to Viral Ed where we create the best educational content on the planet. Don't forget to share our videos on social media, whether that be Facebook or YouTube. And most importantly, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Previously, we covered that the muscular system gives us shape, allowing us to move and complete day-to-day -day activities. It consists of three different types of muscles, smooth, cardiac, and skeletal, each with their individual purpose in the body. Lastly, we discussed how muscles allow us to move through tendons and one flexing while the other extends. If you don't understand any of the terminology so far, go back and watch part one as it is explained in more detail. Today, we are going to dive deeper into the muscular system, looking at some of the more complex functions. We are going to discuss muscle fibers, two types of skeletal fibers, muscle speed and performance, and what happens when we exercise. So let's look at muscle fibers first. Our muscles are made up of cells called muscle fibers. These tiny thread-like fibers are packed together in bundles. Muscles contract, shortening. This occurs because these tiny fibers within the muscles shorten. However, they don't all contract at the same time, as this will depend on how much force is needed. The more force needed, the more tiny muscle fibers that will contract. So we have two types of muscle fibers, slow twitch and fast twitch. Fast twitch muscle fibers do not have a good oxygen supply, which means they tire quickly. They are stronger than slow twitch fibers, contracting quickly, making them perfect for fast, powerful movements. The main use of this fiber type is only in high intensity exercise, for example, the 100 meter sprint, long jump, or even 50 meter freestyle swimming event. On the other hand, slow twitch fibers have a very good oxygen supply, meaning they are able to work for a long time without tiring. They aren't as strong as fast twitch fibers, as they take a longer time to contract, creating less powerful movements. Slow twitch fibers are used in all types of exercise and prim primarily those of an aerobic nature. Uh, for example, long distance running, open water swimming, and power walking. Every muscle contains a mixture of fast and slow twitch fibers, but the mixture is different in different muscles and different people. For example, the gastrocnemius, a muscle that makes up your calf, contains a lot of fast twitch fibers, compared to the muscles that make up your hamstring, which has more of a balance between the two. It can vary in people also with distance running having 80% slow twitch fibers, while power lifters have 80% fast twitch fibers. If we look at muscle speed and performance, the more fast twitch fibers you have, the more suited you are to sports requiring bursts of strength and power. If we look at two sprinters, sprinter A and sprinter B, they both have the same weight, age, and fitness. Sprinter A has 75% fast twitch, while sprinter B has only 55% fast twitch in his legs. Who is the quickest? Well, the answer is sprinter A. This is obviously still determined uh, by genetics and other factors, but by eliminating other factors, it is safe to say that sprinter with a higher percentage of fast muscle fibers will be quicker. So let's look at what happens when we exercise. If we jog slowly, only a few slow twitch fibers will contract to move our legs. As we increase our speed, we use more slow twitch fibers. As we get faster, fast twitch fibers begin to contract to assist. At top speed, all of our fast twitch and slow twitch fibers will be contracting simultaneously. This, however, isn't the only thing that occurs in the muscles when exercising, but is a major factor to how we exercise. Others include increased blood flow to working muscles. This allows them to get more oxygen. Our rise in temperature of the muscles. Our stores of ADP and CP are used up. Waste products such as lactic acid uh, will lead to fatigue and cramp. And then the overuse can cause small muscle fiber tears, which is what leads to soreness and, if bad enough, strains. I hope that this video helped further increase your understanding of the muscular system. As always, I haven't been able to explain every little detail in this video without making the video longer than 10 minutes. So if you have any questions, put a comment in the comment section or continue to research other videos 
uh, or techniques. Uh, this is all for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, if you like the video, to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and check out the other videos on this channel. Other than that, have an awesome day, and I'll see you next video.